This is the Sony KV-SA28M36. Despite its rather big looking size, it's only 28 inches in size or 66 centimeters for the tube. A widescreen, pure flat Trinitron Wager tube, probably not a super fine pitch, made in about the year 2004. Features the BX1L chassis inside. The remote for it is the RM-W107. On the front, Wager engravement followed by some other features, some nonsense gimmicky stuff. Sony badging, input four with S video, composite video, headphone jack, sound mode, menu, source, volume up and down, program up and down, infrared receiver, power LED and timer LED, or one and the same for those two. And the power switch grills up the side. It's going to be interesting to compare it to say, KVHR M36 or the M32 version, despite only being the 28. Maybe this can take the crown, maybe it can't. I was surprised, they had certain expectations for the television, but they're quite different from what I expected. And you'll have to wait till the end of the video to hear about my overall thoughts. Let's go around the back, the inside, and then turn it on and try it out and see what we find. Going around to the back, to the all important connections, a nice round looking back. Nice smooth curvature. Sony. There's our sticker. Made in Malaysia. There's our set of connections. The speaker terminal there. You can actually connect an amplifier to that speaker terminal and use the television itself as a center speaker if your amp is compatible. One set of component inputs. No scarred on this, but the saving grace being a set of component and the typical composite inputs and one or two outputs, no doubt, and then this video is there as well. Australian, Australian plug, definitely Australian issue television. Let's have a quick look inside. We're in, air size chassis, pretty technical looking neck board setup. Couple of sub boards sitting over there. What I like about the service manual is that it states in one of its pictures that the chassis can be set up on its side to aid in servicing. I don't think I've ever seen any other service manual provide that, that instruction. The tube, the tube is a W66, 66 centimeters in size and it is made in the UK. I don't know if I like that. The magnets and magnet strips. I don't think there's too much else to report. Our speakers on the side, on both sides of course. And then there's another sticker with the KVSA28M36. Straight into it, NES hooked up via composite video into the front jacks on the television. Super Mario Brothers running, looks pretty good. The menu system is the typical sort that the Sony TVs of the time used. I've gone for personal picture adjustment. The picture which is translated contrast was at maximum. I've dialed it back a bit, it's still quite vibrant. Color I've modified a bit. And sharpness I've reduced. I don't like a sharp picture, I like it a bit softer. So that's pretty good. Color temperature could probably could go to warm, but we'll just leave it at neutral. 3D intelligent, just a gimmick. Sound adjustment, aspect ratio. Now there is a button on the remote that can take care of aspect ratio without having to go into the menu. Full, full there, yuck. Zoom, no good. You can see the scan lines quite well in the zoom mode, that one from before but good old normal 4x3 is what I like. Back in the menu, is there anything else that I've missed? I wonder how I can get those to be applicable. I might go into widescreen. Oh yes, then I can, I can make adjustments to the vertical centering.
and and the vertical size but only in certain aspect ratio is not applicable to four by three and that's fine picture in pictures position oh what's that? oh that's the picture in pictures position okay don't care for that language english picture position or is that oh rotation okay so we've got a rotation option it's going into widescreen again Uh, we know it's there. Picture vertical position. Might only apply to widescreen modes. Color system auto. It's got both types of NTSC and CCAM. Good. And that's about it for the menu system. Does the job. Get out picture in picture. The mandatory light phaser test. That's a good sign. Very vibrant picture. Very, very thin scan lines. Hey, look at that. You don't mind that, do you? Did surprise me somewhat. I didn't really expect a light guns to work on this television. One more, one more. And now I'll talk some more. I was surprised that light gun compatibility was here. There is no DRC 1000 or 1250 mentioned in the menu system that we just explored, which is a good sign. In the manual of the television, there's none of that either. So that's basically Sony's version of 100 Hertz processing if I remember the DRC name correctly and the numbers associated with it. So that's a good start in some ways. No 100 hertz processing thus far. Light gun works. Now I want to try something in NTSC just to make sure that it does display an NTSC S video and that will be the satin now. Okay, Sega satin time in S video. No problem at all displaying NTSC. This red, this red is pretty rich. It's it's bleeding out, so it needs it needs the color turned down here for sure. Get that color down. I, that might be enough just to tone it down a bit. The vibrancy of the Sony bleeding out like that. What is this game? Zero divide. 480i game. Let's just have a quick look in the menu. Color system auto. See, we were black and white in PAL, obviously. C cam will be the same. NTSC 3.58. NTSC, that's what we want. I'll put it on auto. So, S video, no problem. Oh, gee, this stage is very red. Wow. There you go, there's our NTSC support. Must remember this game. Such a red stage. Good test to see if it bleeds out. We're not in RGB, remember, we're only in S video, so not the true indicator of the television's ability. Let's go onto the PS2 with component. PS2 in component, currently at 480i. Wonderboy collection, and I must say I am warming to this television more as time goes on. Very vibrant, very rich, but bright, and it's a pretty nice looking picture, really. Let's go into Wonderboy. I go into Monsterland, but I like the look of Wonderboy then. Look at those reds. Very bright. I wonder how many hours this television's done. We'll have to see if we can find that in the service menu soon. What I want to do is 480i, 240p. There we go, 240p. That's that's better. More closer to what we expect out of the authentic experience. I've got sharpness right down still. Don't like it sharp. Oh, 
what else can we do here? 240p, of course, 480p now. It would be a miracle if this actually worked, but it's not going to because I've already tried it. So 480p doesn't resolve it, doesn't support 480p, and that DVD symbol is actually a bit of a clue. Because we're in the component line, the label for this component line is named DVD. You can customize it in the menu. But what you'll find on the higher resolution Sony is the KVHR M36. It'll have DVD HD. The HD indicating possibly 480p, 720p, 1080i. But th that is a clue there that it doesn't support those higher resolutions. So we'll stick with 240p. I think what we need to do now is get some test patterns up and go into the service menu as well. I am impressed with Wonderboy. You can see the scan lines there pretty well too. Very nice. The TV is in standby. It needs to be in standby in order to get into the service menu and it's the old trick. You've got to press display, then five, then volume up, then power. They don't need to be pressed all together just one at a time quickly, so I'll try that right now. Display, five, volume up, power. All right, let's see what happens. Should go straight in the service menu if that's done correctly. Yeah, there we go. That green text on the screen indicates we're in the service menu. The 10,858, I believe that is the amount of time that the television has actually been powered on. It's not in hexadecimal. The manual, the service manual states it's in decimal. So that should be exactly how many hours the television's done. Not too many. Picture's still pretty good, pretty vibrant. So I wouldn't think it would have done a lot. Not 20, 30, or 40,000 or anything like that. Lastly, let's get some patterns on screen. I'll hook up the test pattern generator and we'll see what the geometry and the convergence is like. To get out of the service menu, all you do is just turn the television off and then back on, and it won't be in the service menu anymore. I won't do any tweaks in there, but if you want to hazard your way in there, you're certainly welcome to. The grid. A bit wonky, a bit wonky. All over the place. You can see on the right side here, the gap increases as it gets wider at the top right corner where I'm poking right now. You can see it's aims, oh, it's actually, oh, Actually, come on, we should, oh, I can rotate it. Let's go into the menu. I mean, we can uh, picture, picture position. I mean, we can kind of, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of, kind of, sort of, kind of get it a bit, a bit square, but we can get the edge. Yeah, you know, you know, you, you're gonna have to go in the service menu, but Sony do have a bit of a reputation on the interwebs for geometry problems with their CRTs. And this would be something that exemplifies that. That could be rather annoying on say a side scrolling game, seeing the image come into the play field here in widescreen mode. Say you're playing Sonic and you're running across and you could see that the image is a bit warped by the way it's positioned there. You'd, you might pick up on that in your OCD. Alarm bells might start ringing. A bit of misconvergence. Two in the columns, a bit of red tinge on the edge. This is a lower set, and that's probably a good point to getting to the conclusion. There's our colors looking very vibrant. This would have been or is a low-end model, and that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. I'm all for the cheapo televisions because they often produce the best results. This should have been a budget-priced Sony in its time, which I imagine it would have been, given that it is Sony and still going to be relatively expensive. But you're better off either really with Sony's and a lot of TVs is to go to the extreme high-end or the low-end. For example, high end would be the KVHR 36 or 32. You get the super fine pitch tube, in other words, high resolution, two sets of component inputs, 480p, 720p, 1080i support. 
memory card slot, great sound system, etc., etc. You get all the bells and whistles. Your 240p is crap, but your 480p and upwards is really good. Your 480i might be even half decent. Then on the other hand, you go your El Cheapos like this, and you get good 240p, good 480i. You don't get any 480p and upwards, but the lower resolution signals are done fairly well. It's the middle range that you can get called out on. So, for example, if this television had the DRC processing, the 100 hertz, and nothing more up than that, then that would spoil your 240p. You still wouldn't get 480p because some TVs can have that 100 hertz processing, but they don't even bother to include 480p or VGA capability. So those mid-tier levels are often crap. Not much good. Maybe 480i, but that's about it, and that's not a pass in my books. So this is a low-end Sony. It's got the gun compatibility. It's got a fairly good image quality. I'd still prefer a curved tube from a different manufacturer, something from the 90s, 4x3 aspect ratio. But I always say this, if you like the Sony taste, if you want gun compatibility, if you want the widescreen edition as well, then this is probably not a bad TV for you. Certainly consider it if it suits your needs. At least by watching this video, you'll have a fairly good idea of the Sony's capabilities. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.